A middle-aged man, his wife, and his cousin went on an exploration of the dangerous and beautiful sinkhole, Eagle's Nest. Having achieved their dive goal, a series of unfortunate events began happening on their return. The Eagle's Nest sinkhole sits right in the heart of the Chazahowitzka Wildlife Management Area, found in the west-central region of Florida. Under its seemingly ordinary surface lies an extraordinary secret, a mesmerizing underwater cave system waiting to be explored. At first glance, the sinkhole may not catch your eye with its rugged entrance and unremarkable exterior. However, beneath the surface lies a hidden gem, a breathtaking world filled with natural wonders. Despite its outward appearance, Eagle's Nest sinkhole is a prime example of a dangerous beauty. Its surface might not reveal the stunning beauty that lies within, but once you venture into its depths, you'll be greeted by awe-inspiring sights. The cave's intricate passages and chambers showcase the wonders of nature, but they also pose risks to those who dare to explore them. You have to wiggle through tight, narrow passages that are about 70 feet long. The passages go on for more than a mile, like a maze. Some parts of the cave are huge, like big rooms, and they have fancy names like Ballroom, Super Room, and The Pit. The pit is called that because it goes really deep, about 300 feet. But exploring this cave is very risky. Many people who are inexperienced have died here because it's so dangerous. When you first look at the water on the surface of Eagle's Nest, it might not seem very inviting. It's greenish and murky, kind of like a pond covered in slimy algae. Unlike nearby places like Buford Springs and Wikiwachi, where the water is so clear you can see right through it, Eagle's Nest is dark and hard to see in. At the Eagle's Nest sinkhole, there's a board that tells you about the conditions divers have faced before. They talk about things like having super clear water where you can see forever, or it being so dark you can only feel your way around, like reading with your hands. Sometimes when you come to this sinkhole, you'll see that it's covered in something called tannin. Tannin is like a natural dye that makes the water look really dark. But if everything's just right, the water can be as clear as gin. This isn't a place for beginners or anyone who's not experienced and skilled at diving because it's so dangerous. Fred Smith and his wife Maggie were the perfect example of a couple that dive together. Though many couples have different passions and pursue them separately, the case of Fred and Maggie was different. Both partners had a lot in common, and this made the two people share their lives, especially their passion for diving. They both went for cave diving training and were qualified for international cave diving. Fred was enthusiastic about both indoor and outdoor sports, such as football, baseball, fishing, off-road mudding, and woodworking. One sunny summer morning, Fred, his wife Maggie, and their cousin Blake were all set to explore Eagle's Nest Cave. They got ready for their adventure and made sure they had enough time for decompression, which is important for staying safe when diving deep. Their plan was to dive down to a depth of 290 feet inside the cave. To make sure they had a safe journey, they made sure they had plenty of air to last the whole trip. They also had special dive scooters, which are like underwater vehicles, which helped them move faster through the passages than just swimming. With these scooters, they could get to the deeper parts of the cave more easily. They also brought along extra air tanks, called stage tanks, for decompression stops. And to keep track of their dive details as they went, they both wore special wristband dive computers that gave them all the important information they needed for a successful dive. With all their gear and preparation, they were ready to explore the underwater world of Eagle's Nest Cave. Their adventure at Eagle's Nest began at about 10 a.m. Slowly, they went down the first passage of the cave, making sure to set up their decompression tanks as they went along. After they descended about 40 feet, they squeezed through a tight spot that looked like an hourglass and entered the ballroom, also known as the entrance room. This big room is about 150 feet wide and has big passages leading to different parts of the cave. While they were still exploring, Fred's extra air tank ran out sooner than they thought it would. He didn't tell Maggie and Blake, 
but he switched to his other tanks on his back so they could keep going. But it was too soon to switch. They still had a long way to go. They went down the tunnel that led downstream. It sloped down gently until they reached a depth of about 200 feet. Then, all of a sudden, it plunged down into a deep pit, going all the way down to 290 feet. Finally, they made it to where they wanted to go, finding themselves in a series of big rooms and passages. They decided to take their time exploring these rooms beyond the pit before heading back to the entrance room for decompression stops. They planned to stop first at 200 feet, and then again at the entrance room before they surfaced. As they explored the rooms and passages, marveling at the underwater world around them, they made sure not to stray too far from their planned route. After a while, they decided it was time to start making their way back through the downstream tunnel. However, as they began their ascent, Fred noticed that the pressure in his back tank had dropped significantly, down to just 500 pounds per square inch. Concerned about running out of air, he couldn't keep this information to himself any longer. He quickly informed Blake about the situation, who responded calmly and immediately sprang into action to help his cousin. Blake retrieved an extra regulator attached to a long hose from his own gear and handed it over to Fred, ensuring that he had a backup air source to rely on. With this newfound assurance, they continued their ascent toward the surface, navigating the underwater passages with caution and determination. Their journey hit a snag when Fred started having trouble controlling his buoyancy, making it harder for him to stay at the right depth underwater. Meanwhile, Maggie, unaware of the difficulties her companions were facing, continued ahead on her own. Fred struggled to maintain his depth as they passed through the ballroom area at around 150 feet, ascending further to about 100 feet when the problem worsened. He drifted ahead of Blake, causing the long hose connecting his shared regulator to come loose from his mouth. Realizing his issue, Fred quickly backtracked to Blake, who offered him his support regulator for a few breaths until he signaled that he was okay. Blake then went in search of the disconnected hose and managed to retrieve it, ensuring that Fred had the necessary equipment to continue their ascent safely. As Blake made his way through the narrow chimney, he suddenly realized that he had lost sight of Fred, the visibility had become even worse due to all the silt stirred up during their activities. Despite this challenge, Blake pressed on, determined to reach the designated 70-foot decompression stop where they had staged their bottles upon entering the cave. When he arrived, he found Fred's bottle still there, but noticed that Maggie had already taken hers and left ahead of him. Concerned about Fred's whereabouts, Blake searched the area but couldn't locate him. Nevertheless, he decided to take Fred's bottle with him and continue his journey toward the cave entrance. Along the way, Blake encountered another group of divers passing through the room. Assuming that Fred might have sought help from them, Blake remained hopeful that his cousin was safe and sound. When Blake reached the surface, he couldn't spot Fred anywhere, and Maggie hadn't seen him either. They both started to panic realizing that something was seriously wrong. Blake explained to Maggie all the challenges they had encountered during their dive, and together they wondered anxiously what could have happened to Fred. Recognizing the urgency of the situation, they quickly reported Fred as missing and sought help from others to search for him. Before long, a search team was organized, and they entered the cave to look for Fred. After scouring the area, they eventually located his body at a depth of around 40 feet. Sadly, Fred's double tanks were found empty, and the exhaust valve on his dry suit was closed, indicating that something had gone terribly wrong during his dive. We would like to thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed watching, take a dive on the like and subscribe buttons and hit the bell icon so you get notified when we come back with another exciting cave diving story.